What is up, BattleBots, Robot Wars, and BuggleBots fans alike? Hardcore Kid here with another episode of the Hardcore Podcast. And joining me, his favorite wrestling match is Mitsuharu Misawa versus the Giant Turnip. It's Otaku hey. Nate. Hey, Mitsuharu Misawa didn't face the Giant Turnip. He was the Giant Turnip. He Was that his new nickname? No, his nickname is the Emerald Warrior. Ah. Because that's the color of his pants. Nice. Speaking of warriors, we got two extreme warriors with us tonight. The greatest tag team of Roboteers this side of Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Oh, uh, wait, no, that's a horrible analogy. Let me start over. Well, the best tag team this side of Jeff and Matt Hardy. Starting off, um, he is well known for making it to the top eight last year with Monsoon! Yo! It, it's Monsoon! Tommy Brewster! Yo! Tommy! Tommy! Yeah. Hey, How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good well. Good, um, good. Although I am I'm examining the BattleBots team page right now on the BattleBots website at BattleBots.com. Oh, yeah. Something appears okay. to be missing from the team. Uh, everything what... everything looks like it should be in order. I don't know what you mean. No, yeah, no, you, no. Sure? you sure? You sure? Pretty sure, yeah. No, I don't know. Nate, what do you think's missing? Sex hmm. appeal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a great transition into our second guest. <laughs> yes, it is none other than Big Sexy, Tim Rackers. <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> Don't have a take that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like my little uh, post I made in shunt posting, that pic I found of you and Sub? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's yeah. funny. I joked, uh, your nickname about your nickname being Big Sexy as a reference to Kevin Nash. Ooh. I didn't know that you'd look like Kevin Nash when he was a part of the Master Blasters in WCW. Huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll show yeah. it. It's funny. As, as, as they tell me. Mm. So, what happened here? How did you both end up on separate teams? Yeah, hey, what happened? What happened, Tim? Tell oh, basically, we, we... We accidentally locked eyes in a three-way. That's, um... <laughs> and we just crazy. couldn't... Couldn't yeah. be around each other again. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, That's pretty dear. What happened. I'm what joking. Uh, well, I just I, I I built a very similar bot in China, um, where I survived KFC death camp. And, <laughs> uh, it worked really well. I, I teamed up with Jason from Thor. You must know. You must know Jason. And um, we did really really well. And you know we worked together as a team on it. And the whole thing, you know, we 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 went back five six times. 50 something bots and became third despite you know food poisoning you know and thousands of miles traveled five or six times we ran out there between us it's just madness and i wanted to go and see what that you know that design or similar to that design could do in in america and uh we've always wanted to see uh thor compete in america and i know jason wanted to compete at robo games one year but unfortunately that didn't happen but uh, and it's probably never gonna um, happen he has applied to BattleBots a couple of times but i think i think the big the big thing for a lot of us over in the uk is that the sponsorships are quite hard to get mm -hmm. for america because especially for local teams it's a, it's quite difficult because um you know if you reach out to uk companies to say yeah i'll be on american tv they're a bit like oh so you know not on uk tv where most of their market is so you have to sort of hit the bigger international companies it and is, often they're, they're already taken hard sell. it is it's definitely hard sell we we had trouble getting uk sponsors but um we we managed we, we did pretty good yeah, yeah yeah we both we both managed somehow <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah any any, any sponsor yeah. shout outs for today yeah. Yeah, loads for both of us. Tom, do you want to do yours and I'll do mine? Yeah. Um, shout out to our sponsors, K-Cut, who do some water jet cutting. and They did all the metal for the robot. Um, we'd also like to thank Genzace, who did the lipos. Um, we'd also like to thank uh, Besiege from Spiling Studios. They, uh, they make a really fun game, and you guys should all check it out. Um, and our last sponsor is, of course, Tramper, who make the, uh, the wonderful speed controllers for our robot. That comes from... Mm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then for oh, me, for the cake as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tom's mum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank AT and G. Um, big, big help with our sponsorship. They, um, they, uh, they really, really, you know, they gave us that bit that meant we could be there. And then also to Funky Peach, who are the clothing company I've used ever since I started building robots. Every mm. team I've been on, even Monsoon last year, we got our t-shirts from Funky Peach. So, yeah, I, I just. 
off the cuff ass, and they're like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so, that is such a great name for a shirt company. <laughs> the Funky Peach, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. It is what I call Tim sometimes, the Funky Peach. <laughs> <laughs> That's when, we locked, that's when we locked eyes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so tonight we saw the two of you face off, but before we get to the actual uh, fights in this episode, we have a bonus fight to talk about. The Beyblade match. The world's largest Beyblade match. It was uh, Gigabyte versus Kronos. This was acceptable for what it was supposed to be. Yeah. I expected a Beyblade fight. I got a Beyblade fight. And basically, two giant spinning tops with blades on them kept spinning and hitting each other until one stopped. I'm amazed, but for a match that was full-bodied spinner versus full-bodied spinner, there was very little damage done. Well, one's basically just a giant shell, and the other one is a big can of tuna. <laughs> yeah, I'll give credit to Kronos, because it is a solid machine. And it's a great design. It's a good design, but it looked very off-balance. Mm. I don't know if it was because of weight issues, or because of the design of the teeth on it. I, well, it there's also a lot of shaking. Basically, those teeth, it's funny you mention that. He, um, uh, What's the name of the, the, the driver and the owner? Uh, Jerry Seraphin. Yeah, he, oh, wow. he designed his own tooth profile for a gear, so it would work with his machine. Uh, he, uh, yeah, custom designed a gear tooth profile, which isn't an easy thing to do. So, like, even though it does look a bit cartoony on the top, he, he custom designed it for his machine. And so that's probably why it doesn't sort of look quite, you know, standard, if you see what I mean. And obviously it's I offset love... from the center, but it's, it's yeah. awesome. It's an awesome bit kit. It is I, awesome. I love, uh, I gotta say, I do love the aesthetic of Kronos. It reminds me of the, the like, the inside of a, of a giant clock. Well, yeah, because Kronos <laughs> is the god of time. And what time is it? <laughs> Robot fighting time. Robot, well, I mean, Battlebots time. <laughs> hey. yeah. I love it. I, I love the giant <laughs> at the top. It, it's functional, but looks fantastic. I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really hard thing to achieve in a robot. Yeah, yeah. Really is. Like, I hope to see more of Kronos. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure uh, how well it'll do. Maybe it'll win a fight. I don't know. But, uh, Maybe. No spoilers. Just let us know, but... <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a very straightforward match. Gigabyte got a few hits in on um, Kronos and just knocked it out, and anyway, that was basically it. So yeah, n not much else to say. It, it, it was acceptable, but uh, a lot, a lot <laughs> of energy in those big full body spinners. A lot of, that's, lot of energy. That's the thing, yeah. I think when you've got two big spinners uh, like that in an arena and they're hitting each other, it's quite hard to judge how big those hits actually are because there's nothing to compare it to another robot in the arena. So if you've got like a wedge and a spinner, you can sort of see how big that hit is. But when you've got two spinners, you don't realize the, the ridiculous amount of like kinetic energy flying around in that arena. It's just it's something else. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. Yep. So um, Gigabyte got the win and I'm happy for it. So we'll move on to the main card, and I I list I labeled this episode the return of the Woyachi family because we uh. got two Woyachi bots in this episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, but before we get into that, we have to talk about the first match, and it's the return of Scorpios versus Copperhead. When it comes mm -hmm. to Scorpios fights, Scorpios has one strategy and one strategy only: tank. Basically, its strategy is taking as many hits as it can to grind its opponent down. It isn't the most exciting strategy, but just the amount of hits it can take is just wow. I was very confused by the wedge design, the fact that it has the little two things. Yeah, I said those things look very troublesome. Because with those wedges, you really can't really get underneath the opponent that well i mean eventually they did but it was more towards like the side but when you're going straight on you're going straight into the drum so you're pretty much guaranteeing copperhead's gonna flip you right over but scorpios is is a plucky machine mm -hmm. <laughs> it just keeps going and going and going and it's the most durable machine in battle bots for that, my money's worth yeah you could lose its weapon it could lose its wedges as long as those dr drive wheels are still moving it's still going the only way you can truly defeat it is to attack it from the rear. <laughs> and even then, that's very hard given just how heavily armored its front is. That's how I took down Sim, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. What? Oh, what? Yeah. What? 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 I didn't say that. I was going to lie. 
Oh, oh, my God. Tommy! Oh. Well, 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 no, don't worry. We'll cut that out. It looks like a Japanese flag, my bum. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. dear. Yeah, shame, because I like the look of Copperhead. Uh, it's Ro- ridiculous. What? Copperhead is just insane. Like, I absolutely love that machine. Um, did you Have you seen it? Did they show any of the pits in that episode? I can't remember. I oh, believe that. they did. They, I, well... Look out for Copperhead's pit. If they do a segment on them in the pits, it is the mm. best thing in the world because there was somebody who turned up next to them who basically brought their own like stage, like sound system, frame, banners, and everything, which is fine, obviously, but like it's a little bit OTT. And then, <laughs> so Copperhead were next to them, and Casey and Zach literally, I owe them what tattered remains of my sanity, you know, <laughs> are still around because they were there in. To the bitter end with clash bots and I you know I you know I, I always know that whenever I see one of them you know we're gonna have a good laugh and a good chat because there's something mental we can remember from that mm-hmm. experience but they they took that over the top like <laughs> pit next to them and they went the other way with it they went completely the other way I won't give anything away but it was so funny how they got around it do you remember that Tom what they yeah they, yep, yeah, yep. It was insane. <laughs> let's just say they use Craigslist incredibly they have, effectively they had the best pit space ever so yeah. much of, like, I, don't spoil it in case it's in the like, episode uh, no no so no, 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 no spoilers no. please but yeah. just, just not nice early preview yeah we're looking oh, uh, yeah. oh of course yeah yeah uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep our eyes peeled I mean last week last year they showed uh, Don Hudson's pit table and he had a GameCube controller on it <laughs> That was cool. That was very. We were right behind it, weren't we, Tom? I think we were. Yeah, yeah. And and of course, you can't forget in the uh, first episode, or maybe it was the second. You can clearly see a three, two, one, activate foam claw. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. Yes. We got to represent from Britain, you know. Got to got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I I love how how they they even though they're not allowed to say the event names, they can still have a few drops here and there. Like they say, Cobalt is a champion in China and the UK, and now he <laughs> wants to. To go for the triple crown by winning battle bots. Also, so. uh, Scorpios, or no, oh, I'm sorry, Copperhead had the second best button press of the night. <laughs> yes. Where, where is that one guy? I don't know the name. I'm not good with names. Uh, he, I, I only know Robert Cohen is the Casey. I know, I know Casey was, was the one with the, the glove okay, on. Casey, yeah. Casey basically <laughs> did his best impression of Santino Morella and gave that button the uh, Cobra Claw. <laughs> <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah. Kate, yeah, Casey's got a very, very good, dry sense of humor. He, um, yeah, he's he's really quite funny. <laughs> and any idea? What ideas would we have for pushing the button? I, I, I hope not to. I, I was gonna do the old drum roll, you know, roll the fists over roll and the then fist bang. And clunk. I, I want to I, see. I was, somebody... I was hoping to do the lightest super kick. Yeah, I was. About, I my <laughs> body did not break the. Button. Your body doesn't have that flexibility, bro. Are you kidding me? I can put my legs behind my head. You want to see it? No, I'm, I, I'm doing I, it no, now. No, no, I'm doing it now. Brandon, no, I don't want to have to call 911 on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I, I would use a, a smaller robot to press the button with if I could do it. Uh, they have Scorpio a... stand. <laughs> Bill, Bill, <laughs> make, make, a, make a little ant, bring an <laughs> ant weight and use the ant weight to press the button. Or is, is, that, a, is that a spoiler? Who knows? Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> I, uh, but no, my, my ideal way, I'd do the rolling, the, the drum roll and then uh, hit the button. Or, you know, I want to see somebody kick the thing. Like, get one of the young bucks there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Copperhead, unfortunately, got knocked out. And yeah. It's a shame. Cause... It seemed like it, like they, like it was do just... Do you want to know why? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, so, Casey and Zach, I've always had a little bit of a, oh, we should do this drive system, this drive system. Uh, and uh, they didn't have time to do the one they wanted, and they had to go with chain, whereas they usually use gear. And, Ugh. yeah, that was part of the reason. I'm not sure if it was this fight, but... You no, know, it was this fight. I couldn't remember if it was in test or in the fight, but, yeah, I, I, on this fight, that was one of the reasons they struggled with, because of the chain, because they put out a stupid amount of power in those hits, because their body is like a solid billet, and it's just... It's mental. It's absolutely mental amount of power, and uh, the chain just gave way from memory. It was either then or in the test box, but either way, they it were looked like cursing something... and hissing about chain. Curse you, chain drive! It looked like something that um, I-, I thought I was assuming that one of their speed controllers went because, like, the one hit that they showed was Scorpios hitting the top of it, and it must have like popped off 
like one of the chips in a speed controller. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, I, it, it looked like from the fight one of their chains went. I mean, I yeah, think I'm pretty sure it was. The, I think from what I remember, they used the same tramp of speed controllers as us, and and they're they're pretty good. Um, and I don't think they're what failed on them in this fight. Um, no, I, I don't think so either. Actually, yeah, come, I, yeah. yeah, I'm almost certain it's a chain. I think mm. it was. And and you know, when when you see people making their robots smaller and smaller, everyone's going more and more compact. But uh, they're no still delivering. Mount. That's it. Mm -hmm. They're still delivering these enormous hits, and it's hard yeah. enough to shot mount everything. Um, they um, they they really struggled with that um, in testing. Even they they yeah. you know they hit a few bits in the box, but they're smart lads. They're incredibly smart lads. Like, yeah, yeah. I would Rob, even Rob, 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 guess Robert right, Robert might, Cohen, be Cohen built out. this uh, <laughs> bot, right? Rob, Robert Cohen it was, uh, was yeah, he's there as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, 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 if you if you see his YouTube page, he has a lot of really cool videos where he shows off his bots and event reports and stuff. And yeah, mm. he, he, he's oh, yeah. built crippling depression. And uh, Copperhead, it's a cool machine. I, I hope it does better. This is just a little, yeah. a little, a little kink in the chain. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, so here's hoping that they, here's hoping that they have a better experience here than they did on uh, KFC bots. Ugh, indeed. They they got third. Uh, they got fourth there. You know, they they got fourth. They didn't do badly. They just um, they it, met it, me in the, I, and they met me in the semifinals. The experience. <laughs> From now on, Popeyes. So, uh, yeah, so Scorpios gets the win, and we move on to Lucky versus Bloodsport. I had Lucky going into Me this too. match, because it's in, uh, if you have a nice big solid wedge, and you just keep slamming into Bloodsport and flinging him into the air, it should be easy pickings. It looked like Lucky was having control issues, and this brings up something that I, uh, w meant to ask, uh, some of the people there. Is it really true that they were having, that there were radio receiver <laughs> issues? Um... Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh no! Big oh my. time for me. Yeah, wait, big time. Wait. Yeah, I, I, I had some like that. I'll let. I'll save it for our our, our fight review. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, the answer very astoundingly was yes. There were uh, ten or more teams that complained about it, and it nice. wasn't like your usual. Oh, well, no, 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 radio issues. It was like people were like, I literally have no control here. <laughs> so, because, yeah. Because, like, there was, a, there was a part in the fight where Lucky is just firing its flipper, like, randomly, well away from Bloodsport. And it seemed to have steering problems. I don't know whether it's because they had yeah. uh, two wheels instead of four wheels, but I feel so bad for Lucky because I know what Ziggy can do, mm. but Lucky's just struggled. It's it's a it's a very powerful flipper, and um, apart from the radio signals, I think part of the reason they probably had traction issues is is as you said, they they only had two wheels on their robot. Um, in oh order my. to make weight, in order to make weight for that massive wedge, they had to remove yeah. the two rear wheels, um, which was probably the right thing to do. But it meant that it was a little bit squirrely on the floor. It wasn't quite a quite as nippy as it would have been otherwise. That's such a British term. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching the match. I'm thinking, Lucky needs to box rush this thing, and they just and they just won't. Bloodsport's mm -hmm. just getting hits in. This is what I like to say is an ugly, ugly match. Yeah, it was ugly, and Lucky got its face ripped off. Not so lucky after all. But uh, yeah, I, th I think if Lucky had been working properly and didn't have the radio issues, we could have uh, seen uh, Bloodsport in flight. Mm -hmm. Afternoon delight. Afternoon delight. Please don't go there, man. I have, <laughs> I still get triggered by the in-store audio network at Acme. <laughs> what, do they play that song too? Yes, along with such other great hits that you totally remember, like We Built This City, Kung oh, Fu on. Fighting, oh, come on. and The Night Chicago Died. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They do get annoying after you've heard them a hundred times. I have to say though, we have uh, we have another guest that you might not know uh, is oh, really? also here. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, he's keeping yeah. The quiet. Rory Mangles from uh, Rory! Nuts and Monsoon. Yay! <laughs> he's being quite quiet, but he is here. Hey, Rory. Hi, Rory. You might you might have heard him making random noises in the background. That's been him all along. Oh, I, so I, I, thought, I thought that was Nate's dogs for a second. He's waving to the microphone, but he's not. He's not. Uh, it, it, it's the guy who has wins over Razor and Carbide. <laughs> it's the guy who used to be a predator. Hey! <laughs> hey. He's not so happy. He's... 
My missus uh, is also here. She was on the team this year, but she's playing prop hunt at the moment. So. On Gary's mod? No, on Black Ops 4. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so we got a full party right now. I'm here. Yeah. I see this as an absolute win. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, so Bloodsport got the win on decision. Yes. And oh yeah, we almost forgot uh, the uh, after the wedge on Lucky got ripped off, it got sent right out of the arena into the Lexan. <laughs> Holy crap, that was scary. Uh, that was, that was a always... good hit. They, they went for a good hit, and now there it was. That was it. <laughs> I always love it whenever uh, like something flies right towards Chris and Kenny. <laughs> Hooray for Lexan! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, it, it's a shame, but you know what? Another uh, Bloodsport is a rookie robot. It's a nice little destructive spinner, and uh, I'm happy to see rookie robots uh, get some wins. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, yeah, you, you I mean the team? whole team isn't rookie though. A couple oh, really? of the team, uh, yeah, Griffin, Tabor. Griffin last year was on Endgame. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah. nice. <laughs> it's 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 kind of like how uh, went back in season five of BattleBots, uh, they would always call Warhead rookies when the Razor Boys were around <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> or how they said yeah. S3 was a newcomer in Series 5 of Robot Wars. <laughs> yeah, there, or, there's always inconsistencies, but I mean, <laughs> when you think there's so many hundreds of bots to keep up with, it's easy to say when it's your bot, but you mm -hmm. know, when, when someone has to remember hundreds of them, you know, and yeah. produce or commentate, it can be pretty difficult. We're pretty forgiving with Jonathan Pierce, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Armament. <laughs> Just like how we're forgiving with Chris and Kenny. I shouldn't say that, though. Chris and Kenny have been great this season. Yeah. Oh, they're great. I absolutely love them. They, they are, are on such good hosts. And behind the scenes, they're even more fun. Wow. Ah, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah so, uh, that covers Bloodsport versus Lucky. Bloodsport wins. And now we get a vignette, a little demonstration of the new Hydra. Can I, can I just say this? I am loving these Jenny Taft segments. I've always said, you know, that BattleBots needs a good pit reporter. Jessica Chobot was passable, but Jenny Taft, though, she's just such a pro. Mm. Yeah, what do you what do you think of Jenny? I think uh, I think she's really good. I, it's almost like she's been doing sports uh, sports reporting for years, you know. <laughs> well, she, that, that's because she has. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's exactly. the joke. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, what's nice about her is that she comes into the pits and she she talks on camera, but she does a lot of talking off camera as well. And uh, for what it's worth, it, I I think she's really genuinely quite into it, into the uh, you know into all the robot airing stuff, and uh, genuinely wants to learn and and see how they're made because you know they are fascinating things. So. Mm -hmm. How would you compare her to Angela Scanlon? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. That's a hard oh, comparison to make. Right? Angela, Angela, I, I think Angela just takes the just takes the biscuit for me. Just Ooh. takes the biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> then, oh my. She was great, and she was absolutely lovely, and she took genuine interest in us, didn't she, Tom? Like there was genuine. Yeah. It wasn't just sort of. I hate to put this rudely, but a lot of sort of uh, anybody sort of quite. I don't know, sort of on TV in America or a lot of a lot of TV personalities can come across almost a bit game showy and not genuine. But she mm -hmm. was like down to earth and not she yeah. it's like she actually cared about what she was reporting. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't Carmen Electra. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, wasn't I, Carmen Electra. I, I would definitely take Jenny or Angela over Carmen. Thank you very much. <laughs> but... no, no matter how hot she is. <laughs> But the segment. Yeah, so basically this was Hydra and uh, uh, Bronco testing out their flipper power on a washing machine. I assume it was the same washing machine that was used in that House Robot Rebellion re-reviewed. But um, yeah, uh, so I, I'm, I was very interested to see Hydra in action because it's a hydraulic flipper. And as it, opposed uses to like like just, nitrogen. it uses just like a small vial's worth of hydraulic fluid for its flipper. Hands down my favorite robot there this year. Hands Ooh. down. It just the engineering behind it was so sound. And oh man. They use it's... this thing called an accumulator inside. That's how they get the rapid um, pressure increase to use it as a flipper so you get a rapid fiddle. And we, they're banned in the UK because if they go wrong they are literally a pressurized fuel and a gas. So what you need is ignition, and you have a bomb. Whoa. So they're not allowed in the UK, but oh, over in dear. America. And if anyone's allowed to do it, it's going to be the Waiachi boys, because if anyone knows what they're doing, it's those guys, because they've been doing it from the uh, dot. 
So, oh, so, so, me, ba- so base- down, they've taken for me, they've basically brought like a nuclear reactor into the arena and made it this beautiful piece of engineering. I absolutely <laughs> love it because it is like it's like a controlled, utter chaos and nonsense. But it is it works and it's just it just it's great. I love it. I it's, absolutely it, love this machine. It's fantastic. It's it I think it's honestly my favourite one there as well. And uh, yeah. it's it's ah. incredible. Just looking inside the engineering on that on that machine is it's spectacular. It's it's fantastic. Mm. It was the fact. It was just like oh, I can't remember his name. The, the what was the? There's so many of them. Terry <laughs> oh, Ewart. Actually, just, Terry Ewart. Uh, the what one a, with the backwards cap. I, I, I feel awful for a fan. <laughs> that, that's Cl- not really narrow. I know either. Clint Ewart. <laughs> Terry Ewart. One it's of, one them, of all Ewart. of them are great, but like it just the casualness about it. It's like yeah, it's great. We do this. I was like okay. Well, that was a compliment I gave you, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know. It's great. And he just, the banter was fantastic with them. They get the English humor. It's Those Jake Ewart. They do. Yeah, Jake Ewart. The youngest of the Ewarts, I yeah. think. Ewart number yeah. three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they show uh, they show the uh, Hydra and uh, Bronco testing out on the washing machine. Bronco won in the height category, but Hydra's got some power behind it, and... They got to test it off against the best driver in the sport, Gary Jinn, with his Gary Jinn t-shirts. <laughs> we gotta talk about those. Yes. Oh my god, I want one. They're for sale, <laughs> I believe. They're, they're yes, for sale on the you site. can buy them on the BattleBots website. And I think I saw a few they shirts when, at RoboGames once. Hey, they're really plugging that BattleBot store this season. I love it. Yeah, it's, a lot. it's really funny. Uh, so, the actual match... Um, Free shipping versus Hydra. Hell, Hydra! Um, like, <laughs> Gary Jin, uh, if you've seen Original Sin, this thing is a beast. Like, even if you get flipped upside down, you can you can still run either way up. Unfortunately, free shipping can't run upside down, because it has that flamethrower box on it. And that was pretty much it. And it's a shame, because it was winning this match. It was mm-hmm. pushing Hydra around. And Just... then Hydra managed to get under it and yeet! It into the air. Elite. What a yeet. Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, unfortunately, Gary, this is BattleBots, and unfortunately, you cannot yeet your way to a giant nut. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> we got to have him on the podcast. He's, he'll be a blast. Yeah, it, it's it's a shame, because fr- free shipping or- Original Sin is a good machine, but when you're, go- but when you're going into BattleBots without a Shremek... You're doomed. Well, it had a Shremek. It's just that the chain, I think, broke or something. Uh, ah. Yeah, but ha- those has two it been fli- testing of itself writing somewhere. Th- those two flips, though, from um, those two flips from Hydra, though, man. Woo! Yeah, I, I especially love the reaction. I, th- I think it was uh, the free shipping driver when, when he sees uh, his robot fly into the air. You, you look in the background, and he's like, "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> it's coming right towards us. There goes my robot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the, the, one of the best bits about the hyd- the hydro design is it gives consistent power output. So a big, big like downfall of the pneumatic system is you you lose power every time you flip. It's going to be that little bit less. It's sort of like wow. almost an exponential curve. So it, it will suddenly just drop off at the end. And you've got virtually no power near the end. Whereas the hydraulic system will just keep going with a consistent power output. It's just like I said, I, w- I always get excited about this machine when I talk about it, and that's how you know it's a good machine. If, if it excites you, and that's the weirdest thing I've ever said about a robot, but it's true. It's it's absolutely true. I I feel that it's true because every time I see a, a certain robot on a car, I get excited about its fight. Mm. <laughs> my my dad's favorite robot is huge, and he gets excited whenever he sees huge uh, competing. Uh, he, he he wore his he I bought him his huge T shirt for Christmas, and and he wore it out to dinner. And um, he he, uh, he couldn't wait to hear back about how huge did against Son of Hoyachi, and I'm like, sorry, pops, it didn't make it. <laughs> he he was disappointed, but uh, yeah, th- this uh, th- this was a lot of fun. Uh, one of the better matches tonight. One of the better matches. Some r- those flips were just beautiful, and uh, Hydra gets the win via KO. And oh, this next match. Uh. Hmm. Oh, yeah. The build-up for this was incredible, I'll give it that. Yeah. The, the video package they put on BattleBots, man, was incredible. Yeah, so... <laughs> Tim! Oh. Ragnarok is your robot. What can you tell us about it? And the Heartbreaker Spike. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> what does the Heartbreaker Spike do? I, I just... I don't know. I... 
it was one of those things I thought would be a funny gimmick. It's any serious engineer is not going to look at it and go, yeah, that's going to work. It was like, a, oh, that'd be funny if that got in his belts or his lids. And then they're like, oh, the lids, let's focus on the lids. And I was like, originally I said the belts, but no, 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 it's fine. We'll focus on the lids and make me look like a real moron. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> it, was just, it was so utterly pointless, the it's whole thing. Not... It just gave a bit of extra drama, it's... you know, and I like that. And the, you know, people watching it like that. And... I was going to say, like, with that was... heartbreak thing, I, I at first thought, you know, oh, my God, he stole Abdul the Butcher's golden spike. <laughs> the fact they made it sound like a shiv from a prison, like... I don't live on Sheppy. That's just where we built it because that's where Tweedy lives. I, <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from Berkshire. Like, we fund the prisons to keep them away. <laughs> We're not the people in the prisons. And it's it's such a weird thing to have said it for my intro. Hey, but, don't hate on the Isle what of Sheppy. What Zack what Sabre Jr.'s from the Isle of Sheppy. He could beat you in a real fight. Oh, really? Is that a challenge? Uh, um, He'll stretch I don't you know real he good. Is, he, he's, like, I... he's, he's this tall, skinny wrestler. He, he's... He's skinnier than the skinniest person you've ever met. Right. <laughs> so the, the Heartbreaker thing was um, it was a bit of a gimmick. And we wanted to use the heavy uh, aluminium axe arm, the much thicker one. Uh, and I'm a bit disappointed that Tweedy's talking point got cut out there because he actually he was the one who had the CAD software done up uh, so we could quickly modify the arm with the tall Mac. It wasn't, it wasn't me that designed that part it was him but obviously because i'm the captain they put put my speaking part in but it's a shame because he you know he had such a fundamental part in that design change as well but you know as long as people know he, he did it i'm happy <laughs> so yeah. tommy you're yes, you're yes, you're, yes. you're, you're fighting you're fighting your your friend your buddy what is your strategy well, going into this match i mean what one of the the core things with this robot this time around is that we wanted a uh, a bit of modularity between the weapons and the armor sets we had. So uh, one of uh, one of the decisions we made very early on is that we want to be able to swap out our thick front armor for some thin armor and use that weight to armor the top and bottom of the robot, just in case we had to fight a robot such as uh, such as Ragnarok, even. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because who'd, who'd have thought that we'd have to be fighting each other? So... Uh, yeah, for this fight, we um we we kind of tried to keep it a bit secret that we were we were swapping our lids out to the to the heavy lids, and I'm I'm not sure how much of that Tim actually realised up until uh, the interviews, but um, you know we 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 put the thin armor on and put the heavy lids on and uh, and that was that. I mean, with, Tom with Brewster Ragnarok, being as subtle as a nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> It was. It was. Oh dear. It was. Good. We both knew. We both knew the other had something going on, and it was like a day of just shuffling and awkwardness. Was, 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 there, was, was there any potential spying? Was anybody uh, trying to spy uh, time each to other spy. I had no time to spy. The day before, <laughs> mine burst into flame the day before. Oh, oh, so I used the exact same weapon motor mount as in uh, AU Thumper that we used. The exact same, and it never had a problem in 15 fights. Go in the test arena, fire at once, <clears> the whole lem inside does a 180 flip, Pulling my beautiful wiring loom through the uh... robot, shorting to the frame, bursting everything into flames. <laughs> so I had less than 24 hours before I fought Tom, and I had to rewire the whole sodding thing. And it was not fun, because Californians don't realise that Nordic build gentlemen such as myself don't really enjoy basting in their own juices at 34 <laughs> degrees while hunched over a robot trying to wire frantically oh, with cameras yeah. and microphones so, so far inside of you you can feel it in the back of your skull it was not the best day of my life uh... I, remember you, I remember you sending that to me just saying what had happened <laughs> oh <laughs> less than 24 hours to our fight yeah, well, it was it? excruciating mm. uh, anyway in classic yeah. tip form there's nothing I can't fix I fixed it <laughs> Yeah, and we that I mean, arena, I mean, did and, you? And you saw it. You saw it. It walloped. <laughs> I was chuffed to bits. It did a wallop. Yes, it did. It, did. it worked. And then we get into the main arena, and and then the bell rang. is responding to my <laughs> drill transmitter. It randomly fires once on its own, and I have no idea to this day where that interference came from, but it happened. <laughs> and in the test arena, it was absolutely fine. It, yeah. it, it's just one of those things that you don't think of that gets you, and. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I didn't just... get to have a proper fight with Tom, which I, it would have been great. And he was such a gentleman about how he did it. Yeah. You know, there was a bit of rivalry. Obviously, you want to get one over on each other. That's obvious. But we're still friends. And I was really <laughs> impressed with how Tom did that. I, I was really oh. nervous thinking that he was just going to... I didn't know what to think because everyone had hyped up around us so much. It, both of us, we were 
we were we we're fairly nervous in all fairness you know it's, so. it, would, would not, ragnar not, rock have uh, been able to keep going if you if tom flipped you back over or was it just I, I, I mean if we if we could have self righted that'd be great um you know we have more than enough power to self right there's 21 horsepower in that axe so <laughs> If we'd have flipped ourselves back over, I'd have loved to keep on fighting. And it wasn't even about the winning. I just, I feel, I feel sick inside. So I put all that effort in and mm. I let, mm. like, we were excited for that fight down. I let myself down. And it, it was just something that caught me off guard. And I, I wish I could have had a proper fight with Tom. I really, really I, do. We, we you know what? The, the, f- the future's way. bright. You, you, you can always have, like, a little backyard fight. Kind of like how, uh, <laughs> Mon- <laughs> Mon- uh, like how Toron did with Tornado. <laughs> <laughs> or how uh, Chaos 2 did with Cassius. Yeah, good yeah. times. Yeah. The, the, the thing is with that fight, we were both just so up for a good fight. And for for me, for me anyway, um, for me, winning was more of an afterthought. It was I just really yeah. wanted to have. A, I really wanted to put on a good show, and, and I think we just, we, kept we just really we kept wanted saying. to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. It did a good show. It, it was a nice little hit you gave to Ragnarok. It was. Yeah. It was it's just. Like it's it's a horrible feeling to have a design that's worked so well previously to just feel like it's out of your hands. It was a horrible feeling, but mm. like I said, Tom, he could have hit me again, but he did. He chose not to, and mm. uh, you know that was it was really good of him. You know, it wasn't. I didn't doubt it for a second that he would honor his word. So you know, I'm. You know, I, I felt not too bad afterwards. I felt like an absolute yeah. moron because that's hey, the worst well, fight I think I've ever you know, had. You know what? It, 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 when you have your first fight, you, you, you know mistakes are going to be made, but you learn from them and then you fix them. Like yeah. uh, I, I went for an audition a few weeks ago and I completely bombed, but it was the first audition I ever did. And when you learn from that, you learn to get better and then you, you eventually do get better. And the next thing you know, you're winning fights and you're winning bolts and nuts and trophies and all kinds of stuff and hey that's you, you learn from it and yeah I, I i hope to see ragnarok do better speaking of things to do better uh... that brings us to <laughs> a match that was unintentionally hilarious for all the right reasons I, I i have notes written down for this match and most of it is just for like all the pre-match stuff oh my god we got the two the second and first best button press this entire night which one was that the second best or no no the third best i should say because the second best was uh, the cobra press but the third best was who's the woman on the railgun max team i don't know her name no idea but she presses the uh button with an egg beater (laughs) but the best button press of the night goes to the mad catter team who (laughs) presses it with like an electric mixer or something? <laughs> Boy, they're taking this egg beater gimmick too seriously. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we, we also had Farouk's best intro. Uh, oh, yeah, we got our Farouk moment of the night here. Do you remember the yeah. whole thing? <laughs> I don't know the whole thing, but he ended it with this really creepy sounding, Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I watched uh, this episode with my family last night, and Mom is like, they had to be posting these Farouk intros after everything's filmed. There's no way he can remember all this. Uh, he has cue cards with him. Yeah, he has cue cards with him. <laughs> Mom did uh, very Farouk, Farouk, is the, Farouk is the very best at that job. I, I could not think of any anybody else I'd like to do it. Some people Even... will argue Mark Biro. Yeah, but uh, you, you know what? The, the get inside your damn house, here comes a monsoon, is still oh, my favorite. Oh, that, was last year. that was a cracker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my absolute favorite one. Absolutely. I think uh, not just, there's only one other person in the world that could do it even remotely as good. I would have to say Brian Blessed. You, Brian oh, Blessed oh, I would my be God. my, my Brian perfect. Blessed. I was just thinking that name as well. Yes. He is so as he's, a, he's a British speak. institution. There's no other way to say it. Yep. yep. Yeah, so with that said, let's talk about uh, the captain of the mad catter team martin mason i i said he looked he, he's like a combination of big boss man and alex jones <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're, we got this robot here we got this hammer we're, we're, it's a conspiracy our robot didn't split in half it uh it's meant to go in half it, it's a cluster bot you see uh, it goes apart and starts uh, attacking you and uh, one of them's not working he's not coming <laughs> on the podcast after you that after that impression bro <laughs> 
Uh, he, he was uh, he was he was really cool. Um, the amount of energy that he brought into every one of his fights <laughs> was fantastic. Yeah. It, it really really was. And uh, for you know for for what it was, I think it was a really well designed robot as well. Um, oh yeah. The, the way that they had those three pods connected, and they had separate separate electrical system in systems in every pod in uh, in the same way that we saw red devil doing it last season when they uh, when they got split in half of course and also um, ultimo destructo <laughs> too <laughs> yeah, yeah. we don't talk about ultimo destructo <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. dear but um i think f the fundamental issue was the way that they joined them together um, oh god so, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean everyone uses some form of shock mounting whether it be rubber or those little little shock mounts you know that, that connect components together but they they'd relied entirely on all of these shot maps to join the three pods together but they were also all connected in shear so a, a, a blow a vertical blow on on the side of the robot could easily shear all of them at once mm. um, and i think that might have been what happened yeah it, it, it was funny like when, when we when we saw that one pod fly off everybody was just on the floor laughing and that my friend is the john reed good hit of the night Pew. rail max <laughs> rail gun max to mad catter and rail gun max i am oh i am happy to finally see oh, an egg beater it do well it looks so cool yes it looks looks nice it's got a nice destructive weapon and um it is a mini bot. Yeah, it has a little mini bot. We had two mini bots. Uh, the Mad Catter mini bot was a dreaded D2 kit. <laughs> and the other was this wacky little wedge gimmick for Railgun Max. Uh, did, did it have a flamethrower or something? I don't remember. Uh, that was... That, I, I don't know if it did. Mm. It was cool. Uh, it, it's very cool. The red and gold paint job. The little destructive spinner. The team looked like they, they were having a lot of fun being there. And... Hey, this uh, like this episode had a lot of very short matches, and this match was short too. But it, it was a fun short. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna have a squash match, this is how you do a squash. Yeah. Tim, anything to say about this match? Uh, pretty much what Tom said. To be honest, yeah. it was uh, it was just a an interesting way to do you know mounting and shock mounting, but yeah, fundamentally flawed. Mm. Yeah, so Railgun Max wins via murder death kill. And this next match, believe it or not, is a grudge match. It's Team Wayachi versus Team Nightmare. Remember all those years ago when Wayachi hit Nightmare and took their wheels off? Now they're back with two new robots. Falcon from Team Wayachi, which is an upscaled version of their 15-pound or their middleweight version. I believe it's a middleweight. And it's Breaker Box, which has competed on the live circuit a bit and done well on that. And... Uh, I love both these teams, but they had the most boring match you could it ever imagine. It was the second ugly match of the night. It, I like to think that it was again radio issues that had that gave them trouble, or that Falcon is ser has serious uh, teething issues because it's it seemed fine when its drums weren't spinning. I mean, just the amount of engineering that goes into Falcon is mind boggling. Yeah. Mm. You Sorry, just, uh, just just going back to the previous art real quickly, I just wanted to say um, how incredible it is that a team from China has come all this way and done that well. Because bear in mind that, you know, America and the UK have been doing robotering now for, you know, 20 or so years. And uh, the guys in China have only been doing this for, you know, less than five. Mm. And to come all this way and to just obliterate another robot in, like that in such dramatic fashion as well and is incredible. They... It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, they they even had a delayed start, didn't they, Tom? Because she they had did. trouble. They did, didn't they? They had some form or something, and they had to start at the drop of a hat, delayed. Yeah. But they 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 were up for the challenge. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it was it was so cool to see them. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> it's all right. I'm I'm happy for them. It's, it's good to see teams from other countries competing, and I'm glad that they're doing well. Uh, Breaker Box, I've seen uh, before. I've seen it compete before. It looked like it d just didn't have the uh, lift capacity to lift Falcon. Like, it's just like, you can see it just uh, struggling to, to lift up. It, 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 just, it basically just r rode Falcon around as a hat for most of the match. And then oh. uh, Breaker Box just kind of stopped working. But I guess because you, you can use the scoop as a uh, means of a walking device, they weren't counted out. I'm not, I'm not sure of the whole scenario with this. 
was it's weird. a form of controlled movement. So I've had to do refereeing before, as you know, and um, they were moving outside of their turn radius. So it does count as a form of controlled movement, however sporadic and erratic it seems. Mm. Yeah, it, it did look like they were having radio issues, too, when they, the uh, scoop just kept randomly going back and forth. And it's like, it, it's like, what's going on, Jim? You having a seizure over there? What's happening? But it did it did go the distance, and Breakerbox got the win and uh, so, some vengeance on Team Wayachi. And I, I am happy because, uh, honestly, Breakerbox was in control of that entire fight. And I would have been very disappointed if, if uh, they decided to give it to Falcon based on the fact that breaker boxes drive wasn't working yeah falcon the got one good hit on it but yeah falcon had driving issues of its own mm. yeah i mean blood sport versus lucky breaker box and falcon two really ugly matches tonight man mm. i don't like to say it's a bad match but ugly is a better word yeah it's between two teams who have some great pedigree between them and uh that these two bots uh, went out there and just kind kind of had a little bit of teething troubles but Hey, hey, seeing Breaker Box push it around, carry it around, it's a lot of fun. You're just hoping that they work out the issues for the next fight. It seems to me like they're dumping all the bad matches at the beginning of the show. Because mm. Hal Rucker says that, you know, we haven't seen anything yet. So, because with Season 3, you know, it started out hot, then it sort of took a dip in the middle, and then got better from the halfway point. So, I get the the feeling... monsoon fights last season that were the best thing. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> Absolutely. yes. But... I think that for this season, it's going to start off a little slow, but just get better as the show goes on. Not sure how I feel about that, though. Hmm. There are definitely a few upsets. That's for oh sure. Oh, my. There are no spoilers, but... Uh, There's yeah. no spoilers. No spoilers, Tim. Yeah, it's a pretty draft <laughs> season, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we got the main event match. It's reigning champion Spite Force versus the Yeti. And oh, this was this main event was worth it. Very much like uh, <laughs> Whiplash versus Toro last episode. It wasn't the most exciting fight, but it was very cagey and very back and forth. And I really did think Yeti almost had it against uh, Bite Force. I I struggle with Yeti. I. I can see where they're coming from, but it just seems to me it just seems a bit of a lump. Like it's <laughs> it just sort of survives because it's there. It doesn't really. There's nothing it does that it stands out for doing. I think I it's. It, it, do you know it what I mean? It's, like, to, uh, the it's like the starting gun you get in a game. It, mm. It's not. It's not bad, but there's definitely other ones you'd rather have. It's, it's rather... one of those bots that I'm just. I it's like a, it, and there's some cool stuff like, the, the, oh my god, the guy can weld aluminium like a god. It, like, incredible skill there. But for me, the robot itself is just a bit, uh, <laughs> it doesn't really do big hits, and it just sort of, it's a bit of a, I don't know, it's a bit like a snowplow, really. I, 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 a, is that I racist? Did, I don't know if that's racist. Oh, it's, it's, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's Alaska. Alaska's a state. Yeah. Um, Yeti, uh, I do think, it, it, if you've seen it in Series 2 of BattleBots, I think if Tombstone didn't great. stop it, it it that should was... it should have won uh, season two. Actually, in all fairness, that series it was incredible. It really like it 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 proved a point about a bot doesn't have to have a stupid budget to be really good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and th this one uh, th they put like weird UHMW uh, sides around the drum and so it, th th this thing self writes wha really wacky. Like uh, when it when it turns on its side. It, it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and unable to get off its side. But yeah. it just keeps going, just doing wacky dances. And I mean, Yeti Yeti is one of those robots that really wins largely on, on attrition, right? It's it's yeah. it's very strong. It's a very well-built robot. Those those gigantic wheels do, I think, more than you might think. It, it you know, apart from just getting traction, it means that it's very stuck to get Yeti stuck on, on say, the walls or, or on the, the arena hazards or even on another robot. The amount of times... The Yeti has just driven over the other yeah. robot. Mm. The other robot weapon, like with Bite Force as well. The amount of times that uh, he he just drove over Bite Force and was pretty fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, well, relatively. Yeah, when, it, when, it come, when it comes to to weapon and weapon hits, though, I think uh, Bite Force more often than not comes out much better because, uh, yeah, as Tim was saying, I don't really consider Yeti to be that much of a big hitter. It's mm. It's it's the kind of robot that will go the three minutes, but it may not get yeah. the knockout. Yeah, it's all me, about. I wasn't putting it down. I definitely wasn't putting it down nah. at all. It, mm. It's just for me. It's like, um, 
yeah, like Tom said. I think, it, I think yeah, what, so. what it came down to, by force, just had the more powerful spinner. Like, uh, there, there is a point at the start of the match where the two drums collide. And Bite Force cl- clearly got more uh, reach into it and was able to I hate, send Yeti I hate to be a nitpicker. I really hate to be a nitpicker, but I don't think Bite Force necessarily had a more powerful spinner. It, it, mm. It's more, it's more of an effective spinner. I think that's the, I think that's what people think so. need to sort of understand more with Bite Force. It's not a huge amount of power in that spinner at all. In, in fact, in terms of what else is going on in the pits, it's actually got less power than Monsoon's bar had. Oh, I think so. Behind, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, th- I think it's more think it effective at putting out that damage is the, is the key with bike force. That's mm. it. I, I, it only spins at about 180 miles an hour. If, if that. Not crazy. Um, yeah, not crazy. That's it. And it, it's the consistency as well. It's the, it's the kind of weapon that just does not break down. And it doesn't slow down either, which is the, uh, the other important thing. Mm. I, th- I think it also helps you have a really good drive system. Because um, with added drive system, you can get some good slams in. And then you can get the, di- the, the uh, disc in and... Like uh, like Paul is hands down one of the best drivers I think uh, in uh, BattleBots. I mean, he's a two time champ now. He, easily, what does that tell easily. You? you know. Yeah, he's great. He's got a great bot and um, Bite Force. Uh, like people were always going crazy. Oh, what can beat Tombstone? What can stop Tombstone? And uh, we later learned uh, a nice wedge with a spinner can stop Tombstone. But what can yeah. stop Bite Force? That's the big question. Cobalt. I, uh, I, <laughs> no, sp- I think with, with these uh, with these big vertical spinners, it's it's not a game of who can hit harder. It's more a game of who can get under who. Yeah, um, and who can keep hitting as well. That, and who can keep hitting? I mean, a lot of these robots that fight Bite Force go in with with long forks or, or little flappy forks, all things to des- designed to get under to get under Bite Force's wedgelets. And yet he goes into this fight with the very long forks, which I think was. You know, probably it was a good idea. It was a good idea, and you know, fair play to Greg. There were a few times where he definitely got under Bite Force. Yeah, which, yeah he did. Got in, which pushed him around. An easy, which is not an easy thing to do. But Bite Force just kept, you know, delivering those hits. Just kept punching him in the face. And uh, again, Yeti has these really nice big wheels, which are great for, you know, keeping running. But I'm not sure what it does for handling because it makes him very, very bouncy, almost like a, almost like a monster truck. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. exactly yeah, I, like a monster truck. It's great for taking those hits and keeping moving, but at the same time, I don't think it was as controllable as Bite Force. I just, mm. yeah. you know, Bite Force, it's like very down on the ground. Got all the wheels and the yeah. mag motors, very heavy and weighty, and. And then, and then you got Yeti, who just like f- does a lot of flinging around on the wheels. It's it's like watching Bigfoot jumping over the ramp and hitting cars, and then just yeah. it's like it's bouncing. like trying to compare a beach ball to a tennis ball, isn't it? They're, yeah, it's they're, they're they're both balls, and they both do what they need to do, but they're very yeah. very different. And one, <laughs> one will float around and dodge stuff, and the other will just plow on through. You know, it's it's very 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 similar. Very <laughs> indeed. Very, uh, very different style of, uh, of attacking. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it did go the distance, and uh, Bite Force uh, got the win. And, um, yeah, so definitely the best match of the night. And I, uh, the, the, the matches, like, there were definitely some good moments in this ma- episode, but uh, a lot of the matches, I think, were over too quickly, yeah. unfortunately. And... They were either squash <laughs> matches or matches that get, were just I get the really message, ugly. Right? I get the it's message. all right. It's all right. We're not blaming you. You know, for, for, what, it, for what it's worth, with Tim and I's match, we, that really wasn't, um, you know, that really wasn't deliberate. It, we really wanted to have a good fight. Um, none of us really felt very good walking away from that fight as it was. Um, but it, it just, it's the way it goes sometimes. They're, at the end of the day, these are both brand new, completely custom built machines. Um, and that was their very first outing. You know, Mo- Monsoon as well. It looked like last year's robot, but, you know, so I guarantee. Known. I guarantee that it is completely brand new. There's nothing from Monsoon 1 uh, mm. that was in Monsoon 2. Nothing at all. Wow. So, yep. Yeah. It's, it's again, like, I had this with Concussion Mark too. Everything inside was new. And I'm sure Tom felt the same frustration because you get the occasional person who's like, oh, you haven't changed anything when, uh, you know, yeah. he's, he's yeah. spent countless hours working and building and, you know, bless, bless him sort of thing. Like Sam very much felt the same when we built Concussion. He put so many hours into making that, that, you know, making the design, the mechanical design new and more, you know, sturdy. And Tom did exactly the same. Like, 
and Tom had some serious, serious uh, sourcing issues, I'd say, by the by the end of the build, didn't you? Sort of getting the parts you needed. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you sort of you, you you went to get some parts and they weren't what they said they were. And he actually fair play to the whole monsoon team, you know, Rory and Rory himself really knuckled down in that garage to make something work yes. out of very limited resources. Thank and you, it Rory. Was amazing. It was good. It Rory, was very good. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, it was. Uh, I just remember was, the call you guys tough. gave me like the night before shipping, and I was just like, ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were struggling as much as each other. Mm. That was fun, yeah. You know, e- even though we were on separate teams this year, it felt like we were one big team almost at times. Well, I mean, um, we hung out a shitload while we were out there. It wasn't exactly, like all exactly. enemies, like the show showed. It was for the drama, it's, but... Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It, it, you, you guys are the King B versus 101 of uh, BattleBots. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. That is a big compliment. <laughs> Thank you. That, that is. Yeah. yeah. So that, uh, that covers the episode. Um... On a scale of 1 to 10, and much respect to you guys, but as far as the match quality goes, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I think a a 6.5 is also fair game. Good moments, but ugly fights. Yeah. How how about you guys? You want to rate it? Um, Uh, I'll give my performance a (laughs) 1. 101. (laughs) I I think it was was quite a good episode. There was definitely some high points, especially with Hydra, quite literally. Um... (laughs) And, you know, with with our fight, we didn't want that to happen, but it's just, it's unfortunate the way it went. Mm. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, better luck next time. <laughs> now, uh, for uh, the Science Channel, this uh, episode rear airs on the Science Channel, and we see the return of the Dutch Robot Wars champion, Petunia, facing off Ooh. against Warhawk. That's going to be a fun match. That should be a fun. Warhawk always delivers us an entertaining match. And Petunia has that awesome that finale yet? paint job. <laughs> uh, the no, the match hasn't aired yet, but it airs tomorrow, Friday on the science cha- or Wednesday on the Science Channel. So, all right, right, right goes. Yeah. But we did see a preview for next week's main event, and holy crap, does it look amazing! It's Tombstone versus the driver of Silent Spring, Jameson Go with. Sawblaze. We're going to have JMO on as a guest. Oh, we are totally question. having JMO on as a guest. I have to say, after last year, I wasn't sure how he left it with Jameson Tom. Do you remember? It was yeah, a bit I, of a... I remember. He, he thought, he was, he thought he, we were going to be easy pickings for him last year, and he was not happy that he lost to us. But uh, I, 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 How bit, dare you, be, you hurt JMO? There was a little bit of, little bit of awkwardness. <laughs> but we arrived, and he was one of the first people I saw... And he was really friendly and welcoming. And there was no... This is the thing. This is the thing about community. I'm sure Tom can vouch for this. Is that you can be literally screaming at each other. Or something. Or in the box. And something horrible happens. Or whatever. But almost all people will shake their hands. Or delete their page out of a rage fit. But <laughs> most people shake your hand. And you're done with it afterwards. Because that's what it is. You know, It's a lot of emotion. Time, money and effort. And uh, Jameson, you know... He he took it quite well after you know a year mm-hmm. to chill. <laughs> well, we'll see how he does this year, and uh, yeah. he he's won a match, and now he faces off against uh, a robot very similar to Silent Spring, except about two hundred and forty-seven pounds heavier. So that that's going to be fun to see, and I can't wait. It it, it, it was it was a very good fight, yeah. No, no spoilers, spoilers, of course. It's, uh, just no spoilers, please. It's definitely a, a very a very worthy main event. Right. Okay. Someone wins. Someone wins. Someone wins. Oh my oh goodness, boy. I can't believe I said that. Someone <laughs> Spoiler wins. alert, oh, the machine wins the Spoilers. giant nut. <laughs> oh dear. Sharkoprian wins the giant nut. <laughs> um, I, I'm Tom, I don't know if Tom gets this, but mm. do, do you know La Machine? I, I have no idea, like, I don't know why that's a thing. La Machine, oh, well, I mean, I knew about it once it started getting posted everywhere. I didn't know what it was originally. But, yeah, uh... same. I, I'm still not quite sure. It's... It, it's it i don't get it it's i don't know if it's an american inside it's joke just, it's or, okay let me explain or because I'm just what it and, uh, uh, otaku nate explain. well i explain it because and i will yeah. i i always make i'm gonna third episode in a row i'm saying this la machine is my favorite u.s combat robot but <laughs> la machine <laughs> was a competitor on the very first u.s robot wars well not the very first but one of the first u.s robot wars it won the middleweight division and was so dominant that it actually competed in the first ever heavy in well not the first ever again excuse me I'm 
not thinking. I think right. it was the. I think it was the second heavyweight or first heavyweight. Yeah, well, one of the heavyweight rumbles, but you had a middleweight in the heavyweight rumble with La Machine, and I don't think it won, but it did very well. I'm sure it lasted longer than Thor's hammer. And then they, then they built um, a heavyweight version of La Machine. I don't know if it won or not, but it was a finalist. I know it won twice, and then I think Biohazard beat it the third year. Yeah. But it was extremely dominant. Perhaps the single greatest wedge. It's the king of wedges. The godfather of wedges. But more significantly, uh, one of the builders behind it is a guy by the name, you might know this name, Greg Munson. Ah. Oh, yes. Right. That's why Right. That's why it's got the online following. Yep. I think I've heard of Greg Munson, Tom, have you? Um, it's a I, name that I, rings a uh, bell. I actually don't know who that is. He sounds <laughs> he's cool, I guess. So. Yeah, I hear he's an interesting <laughs> chap. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, that's your La Machine history lesson for today. That's good, that's good. So. Sure, there are many British fans who uh, now are more well-informed. Yeah, yeah so um, that covers it for today's episode. We hope to have you guys <laughs> on again. <laughs> Uh, soon. I've actually got a question for you guys. Okay. If you could control and use any of the robots that are there this year, and you had to pick one to take into the tournament for you to use, who would you pick? Uh, this year... Whew. Well, I, I, I was going to say Minotaur, because I love my drum spinner, but I'm not sure how well Minotaur is this year. So I think, like, to mm. like to drive, like, for practicality... After seeing its fight, I'd love to say Railgun Max, but yeah. for sheer entertainment, I'd go with free shipping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, w one of the drum spinners, Railgun Max or uh, or uh, Copperhead. W one of those two, because, cause, uh, like, Mondo Bizarro is a drum spinner, and, and I love little drum spinners. So, yeah. Got to got nice. eat some eggs with nice. it. So. Yeah, yeah. Spe bad. Speaking of Beetleweights, Tim, when Bugglebots? Oh, God. Yeah. When Bugglebot, indeed. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how riveting standing by a box for 60-odd matches <laughs> over two days telling people yeah. the same three instructions was. I, I literally can't say how exciting that was. <laughs> However, I can say that the fights this year are second to none. They were fantastic. And I, I'm, I, I'm not saying this is a spoiler, but Tom, one of Tom's fights was uh, yeah. potentially the best beat weight fight I've ever seen. Woo! The it was it was uh, it was good fun yeah no no spoilers but no it's, spoilers it, but it, that, it, that, that, it's that in would the top make, two fights that would make it the best drizzle fight of all time <laughs> it was oh, wow. insane it was actually insane uh, yeah oh thank you thank you it, it was good fun yeah. it turned into uh, Pizza Gate 2019 <laughs> 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 it was insane oh it was insane. my goodness yeah so can't can't uh, wait to see. Uh, See uh, Bugglebot season two wh whenever that happens. Yep. Um, and then uh, I, all uh, the guys put in, like the Roboteers and the producers put in such a big effort. It's very well done to them. Mm. I'm just a grumpy bastard. Everyone knows <laughs> That's it. That's so, all right. You know. you're, you're the ref. You're, I'm, a, I'm meant to you're, be. You're always focused on saying movement. <laughs> Impartial, Tom, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, they call him Tim Impartial Referee Rackets. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. You told them about last series. Do you know what happened last series in the entire? Oh, oh, that's that could cause controversy there, uh, Tim. Go on, Tom. Go on. It's oh, last series. Sorry. It's gone. It's it's gone. So, oh, oh, that was it. What uh, before one of my fights? Um, you could see during one of my fights where the robot was covered in duct tape. Yeah. Um, that was because we had quite a lot of electrical issues. It kept. It just kept turning on and off, and it wasn't working quite right. So uh, yeah. we we just we I'm saying we Tim, even though it was me. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I I I limped through the fight, and we went back to the hotel room that night. And, uh, <laughs> well, we uh, well Tim Tim very kindly helped rewire the robot and helped sort it out. Came back the next day, and it was working quite nicely. So. Uh, hey. It was the fact that the next door neighbour at two in the morning heard Tom using a Dremel. <laughs> No. They probably had no idea it was a Dremel, and they gave us a weird wink in the morning as we left the room. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't but know what they were thinking. Incredibly I mean, odd. Whatever they were yeah. thinking, by all means, continue thinking that. You know. Tim's got the Midas touch. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyway. He has something. That's yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> Tim. Tim. <laughs> big, big sexy. Still friends is the message after that episode. <laughs> all the drama. All the drama. For TV. It's all for TV, and it's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, until uh, until next time, we'll we'll see. Uh, we hope to see more of 
of Ragnarok, and I'm sure we'll be mm-hmm. seeing more of Monsoon. And um, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. Okay, we'll have to find out. We'll, we'll see the fight cards. I can guarantee yeah. you will definitely see more of some robots. You want more? <laughs> Oh, we definitely more want robots. more. Rem- yes. Give me more, Ray. Robot. Give me more. There will be there'll be more Farouk. That's for yes. sure. Yes, <laughs> and his and his awesome beard. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> until the next episode, I am the Hardcore Kid. I am Otaku Nate. Oh, and I am Tom from Monsoon. I'm also Tom from Monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, and it's robot oh, fighting oh. time. Oh, bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye now. Good night <laughs> and good luck. Bye-bye-bye. Good night bye-bye. and uh, goodbye. 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 See you goodbye. in Valhalla. Valhalla. I'll see you monsoon. Oh. oh.